Hey everyone, I'm Nathan Miller from Boston. Before I dive into this wild story about how my mother-in-law tried to ruin what should have been the happiest day of our lives, hit that subscribe button to support others dealing with toxic family members. You know, life was pretty amazing before everything went sideways. I'm an architectural engineer specializing in sustainable buildings. My latest project was this incredible community center in downtown Boston that runs entirely on solar power. My mom, Sarah, she's been my rock since day one, raised me by herself while working as a kindergarten teacher. She taught me that success isn't just about making money, it's about making a difference. Nate, honey, you need to eat something. You've been staring at those blueprints for hours. Just five more minutes, mom. This design needs to be perfect for tomorrow's presentation. That's what you said an hour ago, she laughed, placing a plate of cookies next to my laptop. That's how it always was with us, simple, caring, real. Then I met Rachel at a charity event I helped organize at Boston Children's Hospital. We were installing a sustainable heating system, and she was the pediatric nurse who kept bringing coffee to our crew during the winter installation. These kids are so excited about your green energy presentation, Rachel said, her eyes lighting up. They can't stop talking about how the sun will help heat their playroom. We clicked instantly. Same values, same dreams, same love for helping others. Within months, we were inseparable. That's when I met her family, including her mother, Diana Pierce. At first, she seemed great. Wealthy, sophisticated, always hosting fancy dinners at their Beacon Hill mansion. Nathan, darling, Rachel tells me you're working on sustainable architecture. How fascinating. We must have you speak at my next charity board meeting. Looking back, I should have noticed the red flags, like how she'd subtly criticize my mom's modest townhouse in Somerville. Oh, Sarah, dear, you've done wonderfully with what you have. Perhaps I could recommend my interior decorator? My mom would just smile politely, but I'd see the hurt in her eyes. Still, I was too wrapped up in my happiness with Rachel to really process it. Then came the proposal. I just won a major contract for an eco-friendly apartment complex. Rachel and I were celebrating at the top of the Prudential Center, overlooking the city lights. You make me want to build a better world, I told her, getting down on one knee. Will you help me do that for the rest of our lives? She said yes, and everything was perfect. For about five minutes, that's when Diana started taking over the wedding plans but I had no idea she was about to show her true colors in the worst possible way. Man, if I'd known then what I know now about Diana Pierce. But that's getting ahead of the story. Trust me, you'll want to stick around for what happens next, because nobody saw it coming. Especially not my poor mom. Everything changed once the wedding planning started. Diana immediately took control booking the exclusive stateroom at 60 State Street without consulting anyone. The views of Boston Harbor were breathtaking, but the price tag was astronomical. The Millers will contribute what they can, Diana announced at the first planning meeting. Don't worry, Sarah, we'll cover the rest. My mom pulled out her savings, wanting to contribute meaningfully. I've been saving for Nathan's wedding since he was little. Oh, that's quaint. Diana smiled thinly but this venue requires a certain standard. I watched my mom's face fall, but before I could speak up, Rachel's best friend Emily caught my eye and subtly held up her phone. She was recording. The venue was just the beginning. Every decision became a battle. Diana would schedule planning meetings during my mom's teaching hours, then claim she must have forgotten about her schedule. Nathan, the florist needs a decision on centerpieces. Rachel called one evening, sounding exhausted. Didn't Mom pick the blue hydrangeas? Diana changed them to white roses. She told the florist your mom's choice was inappropriate for a high society wedding. I started noticing my mom making excuses not to attend planning events. The final straw came during the menu tasting. My mom made her famous apple pie, hoping to have it served as an option for dessert. Security stopped her at the entrance, Emily told me quietly. Diana told them she wasn't on the approved list. She waited in the parking lot for an hour before going home. Rachel was caught in the middle, trying to please everyone. 
Maybe we could do both desserts, she suggested timidly. Darling, this isn't some backyard barbecue, Diana cut in. We have standards to maintain. Then the rumor started. Vendors began treating my mom differently. The cake designer suddenly lost her appointment. The invitation designer accidentally left her name off the proof. I heard Diana telling the wedding planner that you were raised in a trailer park. Emily showed me a video on her phone. She's been spreading stories about your mom all over Boston's wedding circuit. My blood boiled, but Emily grabbed my arm. Wait, I've been documenting everything. We need to be smart about this. Rachel noticed, too. I found her crying in our apartment one night. My mother's taking over everything. This isn't the wedding we wanted. But nothing prepared us for what happened at the wedding venue walkthrough. My mom arrived early, excited to finally see the space. Diana was already there. I'm sorry, but this is a private event. The security guard stopped my mom. I'm the groom's mother, she explained. Mrs. Pierce was very clear, no uninvited guests. I arrived just in time to see my mom standing outside, tears in her eyes, watching through the window as Diana led everyone on the tour inside. Emily squeezed my shoulder. I got it all on video, every single second. That night, I made a decision. This wasn't just about a wedding anymore. Diana Pierce needed to learn that money couldn't buy the right to destroy people's dignity. And I had a plan, one that would make her wish she'd never underestimated Sarah Miller's son. The morning after the venue incident, I called an emergency meeting at my office downtown. Emily arrived with her laptop, and my business partner, Michael, brought a stack of files I hadn't expected. Before we start, Michael said, there's something you need to see. While looking into Diana's treatment of your mom, I found some interesting patterns in her real estate dealings. Emily opened her laptop. But first, watch this. She played a series of video clips, Diana mocking my mom to vendors, making up stories about our family's past, and even instructing security to block my mom's entrance. There's more, Emily continued, pulling up emails Diana had sent to wedding vendors. She's been telling everyone your mom has a history of causing scenes at weddings. She even created a fake incident report. Rachel arrived, looking pale. I just had breakfast with my dad. He... He told me things about mom's business practices. Michael spread out his files. Diana's company, Pierce Development, has been buying up low-income housing in Boston's poorest neighborhoods. She's been evicting residents illegally, mostly elderly people and single parents. That's exactly what my dad said, Rachel whispered. He can't take it anymore. He's been covering for her for years. My phone buzzed. Another text from Diana. The stateroom requires the final payment today. I assume Sarah won't be contributing? No surprise there. That's it. I'm done. We're not having this wedding. Wait until you see this. Emily turned her laptop around. Security footage showed Diana at the venue, practicing her story about my mom being a security threat. She planned the whole thing. Michael's phone rang. That was my contact at the Boston Globe. Remember that community center you designed? The one Diana tried to block? Turns out she wanted that land for luxury condos. They're running the story tomorrow. Rachel started crying. All those families she evicted? They're like your mom, Nate. Single parents trying their best? I can't believe I never saw it. You want to see something funny? Emily pulled up one last video. Watch Diana try to explain to the Four Seasons why she needs their penthouse suite comped for the wedding night. Their manager used to work with your mom at the Children's Hospital charity. Just then, Diana burst into my office. The venue payment is due. Why aren't you answering my messages? The wedding's off, Mom. Rachel stood up. I've seen the videos. All of them. Videos? What videos? Diana's face went pale as Emily started playing them. I've also seen the eviction records, Rachel continued, and Dad told me everything. He wouldn't dare, Diana hissed. I'll cut you off. Both of you. No money. No connections. Nothing. Actually, Michael stepped forward. The Globe might be interested in these videos, too, unless... Diana's face turned red. Unless what? Unless you back off completely and write a check to the children's hospital. A big one. You wouldn't... Emily started forwarding videos to her cloud storage. Try us. 
Diana stormed out, slamming the door so hard the windows rattled. So, Rachel turned to me, about that small wedding we originally wanted. I pulled out my phone and called my mom. It was time to plan a real celebration, one where love and dignity mattered more than status and money. Our wedding day arrived on a perfect autumn morning in Boston. Instead of the stateroom, we chose my latest sustainable building project, a community center in Roxbury that helped underprivileged youth. The rooftop garden filled with my mom's hydrangeas overlooked the city skyline. I still can't believe you designed all this, Rachel squeezed my hand, looking at the solar panels glinting in the sunlight. My mom was everywhere that day, directing decorations, greeting guests, her smile lighting up the room. The local kids from the center insisted on being part of the celebration. They'd even made us cards thanking us for building their new, super cool, eco-friendly clubhouse. Mrs. Miller taught us about recycling, one little girl told Rachel. She visits every week now. The ceremony was small, personal, and perfect. No crystal chandeliers or expensive orchestras, just our closest friends, family, and the community we'd grown to love. Meanwhile, across town, Diana's empire was crumbling. The Boston Globe's investigation had sparked an SEC probe into Pierce development. Michael's evidence revealed years of fraudulent practices. The commissioner wants to talk about those illegal evictions, Rachel's dad called to tell her. I'm done covering for Diana. I'm telling them everything. Emily, who'd become the center's event coordinator, showed us the headlines on her tablet. Boston developer under investigation for fraud and Pierce development faces multiple lawsuits. Look at this one, she grinned. Sustainable architecture firm wins major contract for citywide green initiative, starring our very own Nathan Miller. The contracts started pouring in. Companies wanted to distance themselves from Diana's scandal and embrace sustainable development. My small firm suddenly became Boston's go-to ecological architecture company. Your vision is exactly what we need, the mayor said at the project announcement. Sustainable buildings that serve the community, not just the wealthy. Rachel thrived, too. The Children's Hospital promoted her to head of pediatric nursing, impressed by her dedication to patient care despite her family drama. My mom? She started a mentoring program at the community center teaching kids about environmental science. The same high society folks who once looked down on her now begged for spots in her program. The SEC investigation revealed millions in hidden accounts. Diana's reputation was destroyed. Her social circle abandoned her. The final blow came when her country club membership was revoked. Ironically, they gave her spot to my mom, who'd been invited to join their charitable giving committee. One year later, I stood on stage accepting the American Green Building Award. Looking out at the audience, I saw my mom and Rachel cheering, surrounded by kids from the community center. My sustainable buildings now dotted the Boston skyline, each one a testament to doing things the right way. Success means nothing without integrity, I told the crowd. True wealth isn't in bank accounts. It's in the lives we touch and the communities we build. As we celebrated later at our favorite local restaurant, the same one Diana had once called too common for her daughter. Rachel raised her glass of sparkling cider. To karma, she smiled. And to Sarah Miller, the best mother-in-law anyone could ask for. The evening news played quietly in the background, showing Diana leaving the courthouse after another SEC hearing. Nobody paid attention. We were too busy planning our next community project. Have you ever faced someone who tried to destroy your happiness using their wealth and status? What would you have done in my situation? Exposed them immediately or gathered evidence quietly like we did? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm especially interested to hear from those who've dealt with toxic in-laws or people who abuse their power. If you want more stories about standing up to manipulative people and coming out stronger, hit that subscribe button and join our community. Remember, sometimes the best revenge isn't about getting even. It's about living well and helping others.